Welcome to the channel, fellow Earthlings. My name is Rogan, and you are watching the Mysterious Stoner in a Bowler. Now, first thing you should know, if you haven't been here before, is that I am an ex-Christian. Not only an ex-Christian, but I have been raised on the mission field. My parents dragged me over the ocean multiple times to multiple countries, and I have landed in the United States in the United States as a permanent citizen. And amongst all that traveling, there's only so many things you can do while traveling abroad to keep you entertained. And so I want to share with you a few of the things that kept me entertained that specifically came from the Christian world of entertainment. I was able to get into some secular things, but my parents were very strict and, and very conservative. So they naturally heavily encouraged me to be into the Christian entertainment side of things that they were okay, okay with. There was, there was a lot of things that Christians are okay with that they weren't. They were against Harry Potter and I, I had to convince them to be okay with Lord of the Rings. I, I really had to work on, on that one with them. It's a bloody shame. But that's the way things are. So, three, well, I might throw in a fourth one, but uh, three of my favorite um, Christian-related entertainment companies that I would like to share with you today. And I've even taken the time to try to write this all out as thoroughly, thoroughly and condensedly as possible. So I'm going to do my best. That's why I'm not going to be looking at the camera the whole time. I've got a script over here. Well, not a complete script, you know, bulletins to keep me on track. Hopefully this will be a better episode than usual since I've got notes to keep me on track. So here we go. I have blasph blasphemously and lovingly <laughs> named in this episode the Holy Trinity of Christian Entertainment. So the first one I'm going to call uh, just the Father. <laughs> just just for fun. God damn it. Sorry, had a mouse problem. Had to re-scroll and get back to the top. So, the pinnacle, I would say, of these three. The first one was called... Adventures in Odyssey, and it was made in 1987. Adventures in Odyssey, if you've never heard of it, is a Christian, a Christian themed, dramatized audio adventure, adventure show for kids. It, it does cover all ages, technically, but we'll get into that f further on. <sighs> Is, it was often played on radio stations, heard it a lot on, uh, on multiple radio stations, actually, and was collected by many Christian families. Probably still is to this day. My own family had a, had a decent handful of a collection. And, of course, we, well, between five kids, you're going to lose some things and, and not be able to keep track of everything. So there's no telling how many we really had. But we had a good collection at one, at one time, anyways. I would say that of the three that I'm going to mention, uh, that I'm going to talk about, I would say Adventures in, Adventures in Odyssey had the best voice acting and overall quality in general. The main characters, or at least the main, well, the most popular characters, consisted of, well, the main guy, this uh, old timer named John Avery Whitaker. He was a part-time inventor and part-time ice cream shop owner. And then his two employees, Eugene Melsner, he was like the comic relief of the show. And then Connie Kendall, who is a very, well, she, she, could, be, <laughs> she could be a comic relief too, uh, to be honest. She was a bit more, well, okay. She was, she was like, uh, she was like a, an adult teenager, and Eugene was like ridiculously. He well, he's a geek, hardcore geek, very logical, and and he loved to use big words. And Connie, well, she was a redhead, and 
didn't take a lot of shit. Really cool, really cool cast of characters, and they had a ton of adventures in their town called Odyssey. And the show's not just about them. There's a lot of episodes that have them in it, or are about those three, but there are tons of characters in the show altogether. And it's it's overall actually a really big world of Odyssey that they have, and they do a really good job of mimicking the real world and keeping things pretty realistic, but also very creative with their storytelling. They even go to lengths to include straight-up villains who are trying to kill people or take over the town and possibly even the world at some point. That I know they, they got to a point where they had secret agents and shit involved. It, it got pretty serious, actually. It was, it was, it was rather cool, uh, the lengths that they could go to. And like I said, like, it wasn't just for kids, adults could really enjoy this too. But what really kicks it up a notch for me, for being my favourite among the three, even though it's not the oldest, it is my favourite, because they would have episodes where they would actually say before playing the episode, this one's not really meant for younger kids. And, of course, that would tell you, it's like, ooh, this is going to be an extra exciting episode. And, of course, I was I was old enough, mature enough to listen. They were never super adult-themed, really. In fact, I maybe, I maybe heard altogether two episodes like that. I don't know how many there were. But of the possibly two or three that I happened to hear, there was only one I heard more than once. An episode we didn't have. I just happened to hear it over the radio. They liked to play it around Halloween time, I remember. Um, and I wish I could remember all the details of the episode. Maybe, maybe I'll do some digging at some point and review that episode itself as a as a solo episode on here perhaps um but <laughs> it they made it for older kids or for older audiences they put that warning before playing the episode because get this the subject of that particular episode was about dnd a board game that's what it's typically typically is it is a board game called dungeons and dragons they decided to feature it in their episode and they they built a story around the game not not the game itself per se they used it as a centerpiece but they, they treated it like it was like it, it was some sort of demonic game, like it was summoning demons or 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 something of that nature. That it was super, like it was somehow connected to the supernatural, and was super dangerous, and and that kids shouldn't be playing. No one should be playing it. And oh my god, it, I wish I could listen to it again so I can so I can just laugh my ass off at it, because I'm pretty sure I would. I myself have never played Dungeons and Dragons. I know what it is uh, because I've I've looked into it. Uh, when you leave a religion that tells you what in the world to not go look at, of course you're going to go look at all, check out. You're going to check out all those things. Dungeons and Dungeons and Dragons was was way up, was way up there. And really, it's well, if you don't know what the game is, it, more than anything, it is a role playing game. You pretend, and you there's you. You roll dice, and you there's there's a ton of rules, which is why I don't play it. There's too many rules, <laughs> too much, too many possibilities. There's there's potions and and, and weapon grades and and cards and and you need uh you need a dungeon master or he, he's basically like a narrator. If you've played the game Mafia, um, that is a game that requires a no, I I don't I don't know what games. I, I can't think of any any other games that require a narrator. 
the the popular game uh, imposter uh, no um, among us among us that's the name of the game it's it's uh, based off of of a game very similarly um well an older game called mafia but anyways imposter doesn't or uh, fuck i'll keep saying that among us doesn't have a narrator but the version that game came from did anyways you need a narrator to play Dungeons and Dragons. That's basically really all it is. A, a guy who makes up the story as as uh, as is needed as it goes as it goes along. It, it's part of the game, and that's all it is. It's a game to stimulate your imagination. But Adventures in Odyssey, well, they're not the only ones. Lots of Christians think that D and D is a terrible game. There are Christians who have said that Pokemon is is satanic themed somehow my parents happen to be some of the people who believed that and wouldn't let me play pokemon and i had to well once i was able to get a game boy for myself i was able to borrow a pokemon cartridge and play one of the games and you know you know lo and fucking behold there was nothing fucking satanic about it what do you know fun game really um but, yes, Dungeons and Dragons. Lots, lots of Christians believed that it was it was an evil, supernatural-related game. Oh, my God. But, anyways, credits to Adventures in Odyssey for thinking they could do something adult-themed. Even though they, in that case, they, they failed miserably. <laughs> Oh, uh, uh, I, I have to I have to dig up that episode and find it now, at, at least to listen to it for my own sake. But maybe I will do a review of that one in particular and we can actually that wouldn't be a bad idea. Uh, uh, because I should tell you, there are over 900 episodes of Adventures in Odyssey, so there is no way I'm going to ever do a review of that show ever. I might do that one episode of Dungeons and Dragons, but uh, maybe if you, maybe if I'm asked to by others, uh, it could be fun. But that it's it, it's a huge show, and I'm not, not going to get into it. They even came out with books, cartoons, like half-hour episode cartoons on VHS tapes. If you don't know what those are. Google it. It was before your time. I'm sorry. I'm old. <laughs> VHS, though, back in the day, they came out with a good number of cartoons, and the good and, and the cartoons were actually really fun. And if I could find them on YouTube, I would totally get stoned and watch them all again. They were they were quite entertaining. Not nearly as many as the audio episodes, of course, uh, but still a really good handful of uh, a really good really good collection of them. That they came out with oh, over 10 I'm, I'm pretty sure eventually maybe even maybe even over 20 uh, but they even uh, made some marks on a, 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 some jokes off of pop culture like King Kong Star Trek they actually did that in the same episode I think it was the very first VHS cartoon episode that they did that they had a giant robot playing King Kong well not playing King Kong but that's how ha- you look it up you can watch that you can you can find that bit on youtube for sure and then but in the same episode they had their world's version of star trek and i'm not a star trek fan but it was it was it was pretty funny uh pr- pretty funny uh, imitation to uh, making of them you can you can tell uh, anyways <sighs> They even they even came out with their own video games, and I completely missed out on that. I did not know that until I was looking things up about the show and refreshing my memory on it. And video, I don't know how many video games, but as much as I love video games, I, I didn't take the time to research them, so I have no idea how good those games are. But if they are anything like according to the reputation of Christian video games 
odds are very high that they're shit. Odds are high. I'm, I hope I'm wrong for their sake, but... <laughs> and... And for the majority of the episodes, the, they, they didn't talk about religion a whole lot along the way. They typically saved that for the very end. Like, they... they was like, all right, here's the moral of the story, and we're going to tie a Bible verse with it at the very end. Which was really perfect, because a lot of their stories, they did a good job of trying to make realistic and relatable to real people, and of course, there were plenty that were completely made up and just, you know, just super fun, and with, but they still, you know, of course, they still managed to tie in the moral of the story with a Bible verse. It's Christian entertainment. What are you going to do? They're trying to teach good morals, which is great. The problem with learning morals from Christians is that sometimes the reasons behind doing the right thing isn't the best reason. Sometimes it's not even a good reason at all. But... Aside from the religious aspect, Adventures in Odyssey is a great show. I'll, I'll give it... Well, when it comes to Christian things, it's pretty much my favourite, so I'll give it a 10 out of 10. So the second of the holy trinity of Christian entertainment is potentially a little known I don't does company the right word really radio show let's say because it was a radio show as well called Patch the Pirate Patch the Pirate was is well is the oldest of the three it came out in 1981 and my family even had a recording of it on vinyl. Like the vinyl record players. You see them in cartoons. They're, they're, what the, they're, they're the original version of what you see DJs doing when they're doing this. With the, you know, with the circular things. You know, the, those, yes. A vinyl record was a, like a giant CD. But black. I don't know why they were black. It was probably the material. But that's what they, that's what's music came in that those were the original ipods it was a big box you had to put the disc on and you had to put a needle down on the thing and all that i wasn't alive for those ones but my my parents had a bit more modern version where we could just stick the vinyl record in and just listen to it very very different sound from uh from what we used to listen to today Definitely a, a unique sound, but that's that's not the point. It's just I'm just making myself feel old. I would say it probably has the smallest collection of stories out of all three of these shows, but it comes with its own twist on things, its own uniqueness. In fact, it's in some ways it it's more creative than Adventures in Odyssey. You know, not, not because, not, you know, it, it, even though it doesn't have as many stories, let me tell you. Well, Adventures in Odyssey was a dramatized radio show for kids. Patch the Pirate, on the other hand, that was a musical drama audio show for kids. Specifically, a younger audience, I would say, compared to Adventures in Odyssey. Uh, and, oh my god, I cannot emphasize the word musical enough. Because sometimes they really did sing too much. I mean, it was just like the school plays when they do... When, when a school play does their version of, like... A, a Disney play, let's say, Under the Sea, for example, they'll, a lot of times, they'll do all the songs that you're familiar with in the Disney movie, in the play, in the live play, but they will throw in extra songs as well that you don't know. 
and, and the songs just the, and the songs are just super often. That is what that, that's a lot like what Patch the Pirate was, except everything was their own thing. All the music was their own. Well, uh, all right, ninety nine percent of it they threw in a hymn or two, or I don't know about any gospel songs, perhaps. They they liked to incorporate some uh, some uh, previously written Christian hymns in sometimes, but for the vast majority of the time, they even had their own orchestra. They were in a direct connection with a Christian university, that like a really big one. It's probably still going on today. I'm gonna leave them unnamed. If you want to look them up, you can, but. Um, they're really big, and they even have their own orchestra, and they're quite good, quite good. And I don't know who wrote all the songs, but they wrote their own songs as well. They did their own voice acting. I wouldn't say their voice acting was quite as great as Adventures in Odyssey. I'd probably put them at the bottom of the scale. But this was aimed for pretty much the youngest Christians out there, and also some of the most conservative. I'd say even possibly more conservative than Adventures in Odyssey, but that's that's arguable. Now, the world of Patch the Pirate is trippy. Smoke some weed and listen to these adventures. Don't take anything seriously, but oh my gosh. If you look at the different worlds, nothing really adds up or makes any sense with how their world works. See, Patch the Pirate, I mean, they keep the same characters. It, it's Patch, and he's the only adult. The rest of his crew are kids, and one seagull that plays the pet. And they travel around their cartoonish version of our world, and they run into kings, talking animals, of course, the seagull talks and sings. Very, very annoying voice. Extremely high-pitched. They visit New York. They visit the Wild West, literally. Even the Alamo. The, I, think they did, I think they call it something else. I can't remember. They do, they do a lot. A lot of puns. And rip-offs of, you know, Rhea. I, I don't know. Rhea... Covers, uh, rip-offs, I can't think of the right word. Play on reality. They even travel through time. In, in, oh my god, yes, they travel through time three times. Two of those times are related. They actually use the same vehicle. The, the, the other time, the first time... It's a completely different vehicle, and it's run by talking animals, just, just to put things further. Oh yeah, that's that's in the New York episode. <sighs> wow, that's a really historically inaccurate episode, I bet. My gosh, I'm... Uh, brings back so many memories thinking about this. But <sighs> you get the idea. And, you know, amongst, among, you know... During the whole time, I mean, they do run into some bad guys here and there. And they don't really kill anyone, as far as I know. But, um, uh, you know, amongst the whole thing, they're, they're dropping... Oh, my God, this, the, the, the God and Bible references are ridiculous. Out the ass. And then you throw the songs in on top of that. Then it's like a blitzkrieg of World War II. With how often... The bombs drop. It, it that that that's what it's like. But you know, replace all the bombs with spirit, spiritual God Bible references, and then the songs on top of that. Now, funny thing about Patch the Pirate, he never actually steals anything, or even buries any gold. He just goes around and and looks for it when that is part of the story. Oftentimes, it's not. He, uh, he himself really, I mean, he's like, 
He's like a Captain America of the show. Except with a Bible instead of a shield. He has, he has a sword too, which he occasionally uses. Very, very occasionally. Super rare, actually. He uses it a lot in like one episode, and that's pretty much it for the Yes, that's that's pretty much it. And so it's not like it's not like it's a really good action packed show. You pretty much listen to it for the trippy concepts and, and the locations that they go to and the different characters. It's fun to listen to. And the music the music is not only created by a live, well, not a live, but a, an, an orchestra, a full-on orchestra, but a lot of the songs are actually really catchy. They're not even all spiritual either. A lot of them are just, just for fun. A good number of them are even for trying to get, trying to help you get into good habits. Like, there's a song completely dedicated to brushing your teeth, and another one dedicated to cleaning up messes you make, like cleaning your room, like, if you pick it up, put it... No, if you get it out, put it back. If you wear it, be sure to put it away. Wait, no. If you get it out, put it... Fuck, I can't remember how the song goes, but... Whole song dedicated to cleaning your fucking room. Nothing about God in it. It's just... Here's why you should clean your room. And it's in the song. And it's catchy. And it's fun. They even have a song... Same, same episode as, as the one for cleaning your room... Uh, they have an episode. Uh, sorry, they have a song completely dedicated to peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. It is fucking great. I'm not going to sing it for you. No. There might be music involved in this show later on, but I am not going to sing that one for you. You can look that one up yourself. The peanut butter and jelly song, Patch the Pirate. Look it up. It's fun. You will enjoy it. Unless, of course, you're allergic to peanut butter or you know, peanuts. In which case, I'm, I am terribly sorry. Or, unless you just don't like peanut butter, and in that case, I'm sorry that your taste buds are broken. All, all together with, with Patch the Pirate, I would say, you know, um, it, overall, it's, a, it's an enjoyable show to listen to. And I would give it, I, I would really give it a 9 out of 10. Because of how because of how much they put into their work the the music the sound effects they're all they're not all on par some of them are, are not so great there are some things that are annoying here and there occasionally you will find a song or a character with with a really annoying attribute about it and yeah, there are some episodes that I'm just not really into of theirs. And um, so, of course, there's going to be things that are yeah, are less to tolerable than others. But if you listen to it for anything, you know, but trying to learn a lesson from it, you can actually you can actually enjoy it if if you're stoned. I wouldn't listen to it without it. Odyssey, yes, Adventures in Odyssey is huge because of their 900 episodes, but they're also more loose in their, well, I don't want to say loose in their beliefs, that, that's just how conservative I was raised. And Patch the Pirate, being in affiliation with a Christian university, <coughs> Patch the Pirate himself was a <coughs> very, <coughs> I, I, I didn't get to know him that personally or anything but he was you know he was a very very he came across as a very conservative christian and being directly connected to the university the university itself also happens to be super super conservative even to the point of being a bit racist back in the day they're not racist anymore is but at least not as much as they used to be they're not as uptight and conservative as they used to be either, but <laughs> so so uh, that that's part of the reason why I think Patch the Pirate isn't as popular as the others. But the reason I happen to know about Patch the Pirate is because my mother 
happened to be a student at that same Christian university where Patch the Pirate was connected to and was having help um, creating his show. The, the, the man's name is Ron Hamilton, I believe. I think that's his name, Ron, Ron Hamilton, the creator of Patch the Pirate. That's his real name. And he voices the character of Patch himself. And, oh yes, the, the main characters. They're, they're on, he's not really the main character, believe it or not. Um, I described him as the Captain America, but he doesn't do any growing himself. He has all the Bible answers and, and everything. Uh, the main characters... That was, that, was the, that was the weirdest thing about, about the Patch the Pirate series. They Sometimes a show would center around one of the crewmates, but the show's never really centered around Patch himself. It was either around one of the crewmates learning a lesson, even Sissy Siegel got some limelight, but m uh, most of the time, the person learning the lesson of the episode was someone who was not on the crew. It was a brand new character to the show, and it was someone you never saw again. So you never really found out if they, you know, stuck to their lessons or, you know, or, you know what, what came of, of living in the real world from the lesson they learned. They, they had a few sequels here and there, and they brought back a couple characters that, that they had before in those sequels. But it, the, the new person that was going to learn the lesson was usually someone brand new. Almost never the same person as before. So it was, it was, it was, just, it was just a ra rather, rather odd thing. That they did. But. Otherwise. Fun show. I'll give it. Um, you know what. I'm actually going to. Knock it down a few notches. For all the. Well the overdosing of religious references. Let's put it that way. <laughs> uh, I'm going to. I'm going to knock it down to a. Uh, to a solid. Uh, seven actually. I was thinking nine before. But I'm actually going to. Seven. <sighs> because that, that's, that's it's just a cum fest of religious references from, from the Bible and... Uh, oh my god. I... Ah, before we move on, I do want to announce that in the future I would like to do reviews all the Patch the Pirate episodes from a stoned perspective. And I might get my sister involved uh, because she listened to a good number of them as well. And she also spoke sweet. Uh, and uh, we'll probably do like a, uh, like a YouTube podcast deal. Um, so that's something we might do in the future is review all the Patch the Pirate episodes or at least a good number of them uh, just for fun because I think that would be really fun. Uh, the the one I listened to had me laughing hysterically. So that'll probably be the one we start with. And but but later on, later on, um, it's definitely going to be more lighthearted than. Well, hopefully more lighthearted than going through the Bible, which I try to keep lighthearted anyways. But, you know, to break up the monotony of the Bible. Well, going through the Bible, I guess you could say. <laughs> with a bit of adventure. A trippy adventure with Patch the Pirate. I think that's something we'll do. And, uh, I think that's something we can have a lot of fun with. But enough about him. Let's move on to our last one. The Holy Ghost of them all. Veggie Tales. Now, Veggie Tales was made in 1993, so it's the youngest of all three. It was also a kids' show. It doesn't. I don't think it exists any. I, yeah, I don't think it exists anymore. 
I'm sure Christian companies and bookstores still sell them, so I'm sure you can find them, but I think they're not making episodes anymore. They're made for kids. Anyone can enjoy them. They are just as creative as Patch the Pirate. They make all of their own songs. And they do a lot of their own funny songs. Um, not uh, they, they, they don't do nearly as many. They're, they're not like they're not like um, they're not musicals like Patch the Pirate. They don't dump you over the head with the religious references a ridiculous number of times. In that regard, they're a little bit more like Adventures in Odyssey. But they do throw in a song or two along the way. Sometimes two, uh, usually no more than three, perhaps, in a half-hour episode. So that's that's like a really good chunk of time between songs. It's fucking perfect, really. But they weren't audio. Veggie Tales, I'm sure you've heard of them. If you haven't, well, get stoned and do some YouTubing. Because, fun show. Just as creative as, as Patch the Pirate, much less singing. The differences just skyrocket from, from everyone else. As per the name, the show is about vegetables. Instead of animals or people, everything is acted out by vegetables and occasionally fruits. It's still... De well, I think... Well, okay. The main two characters, the hosts of the show, two most popular characters, Bob the Tomato and Larry the Cucumber. So, I guess... Bob's technically a fruit, if you want to go that way. Uh, Bob was more of the serious one. And Larry, of course, was fucking hilarious. My favourite character of the show by far. It would start off with them on a sink and them talking about, well, usually something connected to that day's lesson that they were going to talk about. But they would answer questions from letters that... Um, well, I'm assuming they were fictitious letters that were sent to them. And usually the questions would have something to do with, well, how to react to an uncomfortable situation. Or, or to a bully. Or some other, usually, well, it was, it was all written by kids, so they would be kid-related problems. And Bob and Larry would talk about it for a minute or two, and then bring in the story, and the story would happen to have something to do with answering that question. How to react, or what to do, in whatever the, whatever the given situation was. The stories could vary from the fruits and vegetables acting out an actual Bible story, or it could be a story, um, like a, a retelling of, of, a, of, well, one of the ones they used was A Tale of Two Cities. Very popular, very old, well, maybe not popular these days, but it was a very popular story back in the day. Back in the day. When people read books with pages that you turn in them. They, before they had audiobooks and such. Well, maybe they had audiobooks on. They probably did. But, anyways. But they, they also created their completely unique stories. And they did, they did a really good job. Um, it, was com it was 3D animated. A lot of people thought it looked kind of creepy. I didn't think it did. But I was a kid. I was I was enjoying it too much. And they didn't, like I said, they didn't overdose you with too much spiritual stuff. And right in the middle of every episode, they would stop. And Larry, the cucumber, would have a special silly song that he would sing. Completely unrelated to anything spiritual. 100% just for fun. Not, like, really, not anything with morals 
in it either. It was just completely for fun. And that was probably one of the best aspects about VeggieTales that I would I would have to say well is is one of my favorites. Definitely worth watching Stoned. They they even did a really telling they did a retelling of the Lord of the Rings. Which their version was called Lord of the Beans. Lord, Lord of the Bean. One bean, I think. <laughs> they even had their own Smeagol in it too. It was it was quite good. Oh my god, the The silly song with Larry for that one. Larry because it was Lord of the Rings. You know, they have elves, hobbits, fantasy creatures like that. Larry was dressed up as Elvis and did an but with Elvish ears and did an Elvish type song. Sang a love song about an elf in an Elvis style. In an Elvis suit with a guitar with Elvish ears. Look it up. It's fun. They even did some episodes with Larry as a, a Batman type character called Larry Boy. He had his own butler who was an, who was a, an asparagus and he had some gadgets. He had plungers on the side of his head and a fin over the over the top of his mask. It was I thought he actually looked pretty cool for a fucking vegetable. Of course, he was as cool as Batman, but uh, I got to know Larry Boy better than Batman. Initially, I know Batman a lot better these days. And he's still not my favourite hero. <laughs> oh, fuck, that's a different conversation. I'm a nerd too, so I'm... And I have ADD and I'm stoned. <sighs> they did try and do 2D cartoons, VeggieTales, but... Honestly, the 2D cartoons creeped me out. Well, well, the 3D ones didn't. I don't know how that works. But... Eventually, the... Last, last I heard, they, uh, they, they sank. And they are officially no more. Patch the Pirate might also be no more as well come to think of it but that was yes so v veggie tales veggie tales they always wrapped it up every every one of the groups of these every every three of these shows always wrapped up with a bible lesson at the end and you know while i have greatly enjoyed all three of these amazing and creative productions and I, I probably will again in the future it's never going to be the same for me like it was when when i was a kid because when when i was a christian i believed those things that they talked about and i i i didn't really understand it entirely I was just glad to not be listening to hymns or, you know, to be, you know, reading the Bible or, you know, doing something my parents thought was entertaining that I didn't. These were the closest things to making the Bible entertaining for me that, well, that, that could be done. And while some of what... Some of what each of these each of these shows have to say some of what they might have to say might be good might be useful in fact i guarantee they do have some good and useful things to say along the way and while their intention is good their overall theme is the overall christian theme that we are all broken and sinful and incapable of repairing ourselves that we need God that, and that if we don't call out to God that we're all going to burn in hell yeah just for not believing in him and for not calling out to him for help we can't 
be bothered to just do it for free, even though he supposedly loves us very much. He can't just fucking cure us if he thinks we're so damn diseased. Uh, they want us to believe that the only person that can save us from hell, from ourselves, is Jesus Christ. And, and the only way to live a good life is to do exactly as the Bible says. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I'm here to inform you that that is all a lie. You are not broken by sin. You are not damaged by some magical curse. And you will not burn in hell for not believing in Jesus. It's true. We fail to make the right choices a lot of the times. But while some might say we are born to fail, look at all the things that humans have been able to overcome and create when they set their minds to it. Failures and imperfections have not stopped humanity from creating the light bulb, from making all kinds of machines, including flying machines and self-driving cars now. We've got computers, radios, internet, crazy technology that's the vast majority of us simply do not understand. It is practically magic to us. We know it's science and technology, but that's just a fancy word. Like, if you had to fix your phone right now, odds are extremely high that you have no idea how to do that. Because that's not what you do for a living. You probably do something a lot simpler than fixing iPhones or Androids, whatever it is that, that, that you work with. But whatever it is you're doing, and then, but the things, you know, you can look around you, look, look at the things that mankind has created. Look at what we've done. We've even, we've even gone and created a steadily evolving civilization that just, it steadily gets better over time. Not perfect, we're, we're a long ways from being perfect, but it steadily gets better and better. We've even created nuclear warheads. We've done space exploration. Humans did all those amazing things. And if humans can do that, all that stuff, create all that stuff, they're, if they're so full of potential that they can do that, then guess what? The same potential that is in all those people, all those great human beings, the same potential that they have rests within you as well. You don't need a God to make you a good person, to make you contribute to society and help things get better. In fact, that reminds me of a quote that goes, whether they have religion or not, Good people will do good things, and bad people will do bad things. But to make a good person to do something bad, that takes religion. And I'm not saying that Patch the Pirate and Adventures in Odyssey and Veggie Tales all try to make children do bad things. No, no, that's not what I'm trying to say. Their, their intention is good, but they don't... Because, because Christianity is their theme, they don't teach that self-confidence, that potential that all of us humans have. They don't teach that we are able to take care of ourselves and each other, that we don't need a God. And that's why I can't give any of them a 10 out of 10 rating. Not even VeggieTales for being the most casual and laid back about it all around, I, I think. Oh, I, suppose, I suppose it is debatable since they have more music. But, I mean, I, I even give them... I, I rate them higher than Patch the Pirate. I, I'd say they're more like a... More like a, a 9 out of 10. Well, 9... 
Wait, didn't I think I said Adventures in Odyssey was nine out of ten? So yeah, I would say uh, um, Veggie Tales is is right there with Adventures in Odyssey, in my opinion. But yeah, like I said, can't give it the ten out of ten rating because Christianity is such a downer of a religion. It, it <laughs> really is when you rip it apart and. Look at it. So while I would recommend them for stoned or drunk entertainment, or, or sober, if that's what you're into, because I really think you would... I need something else to go to go, to go along with, with me to, to be able to go through that shit. Too many memories. I need to soften the blows. But while I recommend them for... Just pure entertainment, I would not recommend them for life lessons. Some good things along the way in all three of them, for sure, absolutely. But you wouldn't just swallow anything, any random stranger sticks in your mouth now, would you? I, I, I would hope not. I would hope not. So, don't take in what just anyone sticks in your ear. Just because they're yelling at you or they're telling you doesn't mean you have to listen. In fact, you should always question. Even question me. Because, I, fuck knows, I've been wrong about a ton of things. And if you have kids, definitely, definitely don't let them listen to it without you being there. Because you don't want them to believe that shit. And that concludes this episode. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you'll find some enjoyment in checking out any of those three shows. I'm sure you will find something enjoyable in one of those. If you've enjoyed today's episode, please leave a like, share and subscribe. And if, you know... Name if if you know any of the episodes from any of those three shows, leave a like in in the comments below. If you knew of a different Christian facet of entertainment that you grew up on, I probably hadn't heard of it, but leave it in the comments below. Maybe I have. Really, the only other one I'm familiar. Oh, you know what? I did think of a couple more just now. McGee and Me was a big one. I won't get into that. I won't get into any of these other ones, but McGee and Me was sort of... Uh, there's a reason why it's not in the Holy Trinity. <laughs> as well as Superbook. Although Superbook, that one... Well, that one was a... Kind of missed out on that one. And don't forget, I'm skipping this next week again, and the one after will be the Christmas Bible story. Probably... From the book of Matthew, I'm thinking. So come back for that one. And... I hope you are enjoying your December. And this COVID season. Stay safe, my friends. Watch the ice out there. It's getting cold. Bundle up. Don't get sick. And I will see you in two weeks. Till then, more friends, farewell.